era in Chicago history came to an end. The behemoths of the pro wrestling business paid their very last call to the International Amphitheater before that place locks up for good at the end of the month. Well, that was also a bittersweet night for me as well. You see, for the better part of three years in the middle 70s, I worked at the amphitheater, interviewing the wrestlers and helping film the matches. So it was a homecoming as I got to climb into the ring. The one and only Al Lerner! <laughs> here he is! We're glad to be here, and we're glad to see you too. Enjoy the matches! Pro wrestlers have made this trek to the ring at the amphitheater since 1949. This, however, would be the last night. After more than 400 wrestling promotions in the back of the Arch neighborhoods, the amphitheater is closing. 11,000 folks came out to bid farewell to the building that housed the Wrestling Hall of Fame and the 1968 Democratic National Convention. Promoter Bob Luce, never at a loss for words, was sad, but not devastated by the amphitheater's demise. It's not a crying situation. It's, it's sort of a sad, it's like a wake. It's not a crying situation. Uh, and like, uh, you know, there's a lot of me in this building, and there's a lot of Ganya here, and Bruiser, and some of these great guys. Bobby Heenan, however, the bad guy wrestler and manager, stayed in character as he bade farewell to the place where he's made a large portion of his fortune. You know, I was the one that suggested uh, 15 years ago they tear this building down and build a slum. That was my idea what they should do with the amphitheater. So the people of Chicago, I don't care. I don't like you either. The amphitheater's last night of wrestling was a star set at a fair. That is, if your galaxy includes the likes of Rock and Roll Zumha, Sergeant Jacques the Ripper Goulet of the French Foreign Legion, and Big Chief Wahoo McDaniel. Well, the promotion even brought in taxi star Andy Kaufman to continue his long-running feud with Jerry the King Lawler. Now, Lawler, you may remember, is the man who put Kaufman in the hospital with a series of pile drivers back when Kaufman entertained thoughts of actually being a wrestler. For this hype, Kaufman and Heenan were in the corner of strongman Ken Batera. They plotted the demise of Lawler. It almost worked. star on the card. Hulk Hogan, who beat up on Sylvester Stallone in Rocky III, was on this card to engage in an arm wrestling contest with none other than Jesse Ventura. But as Hulk was on his way to victory, that nasty Jesse Ventura played dirty pool. He jabbed his hand into Hulk's Adam's apple, all of which will set up an exciting rematch, which will have to take place at wrestling's new address in Chicago. Perhaps it'll be the Rosemont Horizon or the Pavilion at Harrison and Racine. For a while anyway, though, wrestling will not be the same without the amphitheater. Oh, sure, the bad guys and the good guys will battle. The fans who believe will come to worship their heroes. And the ones who don't believe will still enjoy the show and still wonder if it's on the up and up and never really know. But like the Marigold Arena and the Coliseum before it, the amphitheater is passing into Chicago history. We're glad we came to say goodbye. So, friends, another night of wrestling at the amphitheater. It's the last night of wrestling at the amphitheater. Wrestling wins. They made their money. And no, it will not go away in Chicago. That is for sure. No, it won't go away. As a matter of fact, wrestling is making a comeback. I asked Vern Gagne and Bob Luce why, and they said probably because of the economy. When the economy is bad, usually wrestling it goes very well. One last thing, the high flyers, Jim Brunzel and Greg Gagne, retain their world tag team title. I had to get that. And a fine program.